my video got on the divine will um got a lot of comments over 400 plus comments a lot of discussion a lot more than i would ever do a lot of people agreeing with me a lot of people not agreeing with me i will say most of the comments people not agreeing with me you were very um charitable which is a good sign you know there wasn't any viciousness or acrimonious attacks on me or people that messaged me or emailed me you were all very courteous and i do appreciate that but i just wanted to kind of draw your attention a little bit to my own spiritual path um i remember i remember in in seminary we used to have you know in in, in our rooms we have the bookshelf of of the writings of Father Marcel Nuestro Party, a, a, a um, kind of a, a like this long bookshelf of different letters that Father Marcel supposedly wrote, and uh, um, I, I used to remember reading it, and I said, "I'm a spiritual dunce." I used to feel like a spiritual dunce. I don't understand them. Uh, like I'd read them, but I said, I'm not getting any nourishment from these letters. And other people say, yes, they were they would quote them off and they knew everything about it and what he wrote. And I just said, I, I, I don't get these letters at all. <laughs> I don't get them at all. I felt like a spiritual dunce. And then, of course, you weren't allowed to say that. I wasn't allowed to. You, you couldn't say this because... You know, the Legionaries of Christ, the founder was practically a canonized saint. There was approvals from every level. His mother was a servant of God. His mother, Father Marcial's mother, was a servant of God. So how could he not be someday a saint? And look, every Nicol Opstat and his books were getting Nic uh, imprimators, Nicol Opstat, every, you know. So kind of, I, ha I speak from a tiny bit of experience, kind of been a little bit burnt by that experience and then a few a while later after i left the legion of christ when i was coming back to the faith involved in in something else that that you know kind of didn't help me either and so i kind of if people understand me and sorry maybe this is just a flaw on my part i do question what I'm being fed, you know, especially when people ask me for my opinion. What do you think of that? Want you, for for example, people ask me for their my opinion on the the House of Prayer in Ackle. You know, what do I think of the House of Prayer in Ackle? I've never been there, and I don't advise you to go there. That simple as. You know, I just look at the statement that Diocese of Tune put out, and that's it. Now, am I missing out on something there? Am I Is my spiritual life less rich for not going to the house of prayer knock? I don't think I've missed out on anything. Especially when the diocese is uncomfortable with what the setup is there. Now, I'm not casting her in a bad light. I'm just saying I don't have any spiritual yearning or need to go to the house of prayer in Ackle. What do, people ask me, what do I think of the Book of Truth, uh, Maria Divine Mercy, also in Dublin? I say, well, <laughs> some of her prophecies came through. A, a broken clock is right twice a day. My spiritual life isn't any richer or poorer because I don't read the Book of Truth by Maria Divine Mercy. That said, you know, a lot of people hold a lot of weight to her and they absolutely believe that you know in all of these things but is do, you, do kind of people realize where where i've been on that another thing for example here's the works the full works of uh, saint john of the cross in spanish all of the works would i recommend these works to people where are you in the spiritual life um people recommend there's this book fulfillment of all desire and ralph martin talks about saint john of the cross and he says it's in his introduction and he says 
I had first tried to read St. John of the Cross as Ascent of Mount Carmel shortly after my spiritual waking I had experienced at Notre Dame. After reading less than 100 pages or so, I remember putting it down because it seemed too hard to understand and rather negative in its approach. It wasn't worth something. It wasn't something I could relate to at that time. Now he's talking about St. John of the Cross, Doctor of the Church, canonized saint he's talking and he's making this reflection now listen to this listen to this however in the airport in zurich in 1993 as i read the spiritual canticle it was as if i was blinded by an excess of light and insight as i read i felt that everything i ever experienced felt desired longed for and strove to understand was being revealed to me in a depth of understanding and measure of beauty and meaning that literally took my breath away. It was the right book at the right time. I had never flagged in my desire to follow the Lord or to grow in holiness through all the years, but reading John opened me to something of absolute depths that I encountered in God during the that awakening so many years ago and gave me the hope that all I had hoped for then in relationship to him was indeed possible. I was being called again to launch out into the deep. As in Ralph Martin's fulfillment of all desire talking about John the Cross. So depending on where you're starting in the spiritual life, if somebody is coming into the church or you're you're, you're starting to be catechized. And if I was to throw St. John of the Cross at you, you know, it probably wouldn't be the the, the thing to, to be placed into your spiritual life at that time. Right. So, okay. Now, going back to Luisa Picaretta and and the kingdom of the divine will. Okay, I was first introduced to this four years ago. Four years ago, and I rem- and I'm not, uh, and I've read a lot, and I try to keep myself informed. I'm not a theologian, so I'm not a Father Yanuzzi or any or or a a, a um, Francis Hogan. Uh, I do admit that, but our Lord didn't give a teaching. Our Lord doesn't give us a, a faith that is going to torture us intellectually and mentally you know and I said to myself I don't understand this I don't understand this but I didn't say I didn't criticize it and I, and I just said okay it's a, it's a, it's a it sits where it sits in the genre of private revelation and and I just park it over here dip in and out of it I have listened to every single video that I could about this spirituality Every single video in the car, uh, I've put on Daniel O'Connor's videos. I've read his book, uh, the audio book. I've read fa- everything the Father Yanuzzi put out. And I said, okay, it's interesting, this spirituality, but I'm not connecting. And then when the Vatican and various bishops and various people started to speak about it, I said, okay, well, now they've raised some some questions. What I will say any spirituality that comes out over the course of the last 2000 years has always had a debate around it. So the spiritual exercises were were criticised back in their day. And St. Teresa of Avila's book was critiqued, was, was mulled over back in the day. And there were people for and against it. St. John of the Cross, you know, every single thing that comes up in the church ha- has gone through this discussion, which I think is healthy. It's healthy to have a discussion like this because the last thing you want is to say only a theologian can discuss this. If you've been true, the theolog- only you're allowed to, do, to discuss it. Well, the ordinary Catholic that's been introduced to some things should be allowed to raise questions and, and discuss it. And my big question, this is the big question about uh, Luisa Picaretta and, and living in the divine will. It's not a devotion. People are saying it's a way of life. So it's not a devotion, it's a way of life. The era of the divine will, the, the, the living in the divine will and the era of the divine will. When people ask me, what do I think of, for example, uh, The Flame of Love by Elizabeth Kindlin? 
I read this book, digested this book, loved this book, res resonated with me end to end. No issues. But then Elizabeth Kindle isn't isn't giving us a, a uh, living in the flame of love type. It's, it's a very different to Luisa Picaretta. People are then criticising me because I promote Maria Valtorta. Maria Valtorta. And as I said, you know, people are promoting uh, the, cho the Chosen, you know, that, that, that series on the life of Christ that's been produced by Mormons and Protestants. There's a lot of Catholics promoting it. You know, Maria Valtorta is describing the life of Christ. Either she has an extremely active imagination because it is extremely well written and sick, very engaging. She's got a very active imagination or it is what it is. It is our Lord allowing her to have a glimpse into his life. But then it's, Maria Valtorta is taking a back seat. She's sitting, at, she's sitting at the back seat looking at something. And we don't have this movement around Maria Valtorta of, uh, we don't have this, what, what we have with Luisa Picaretta and the Divine Will movement. There's, there's kind of, do you see where I'm pointing at? Very different genres, very different writers, very different in, in, in what they're doing now. But that said, the, the only good thing that the, divine will movement has behind them are the people that promoted are extre extremely credible and charitable uh father Yanuzzi, there's no doubt about it comes across extremely credible daniel o'connor francis hogan greg dunn and others that that i know <laughs> i mean i did an interview in garabandal with um with anne vegel and uh, very credible people without a shadow very credible Lovely people. But there was lovely people in the Legions of Christ with me. Very credible as well. Really nice. That ate everything about the, the spirituality that was formed around us. And sometimes you have to be careful to 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 gently with with with, with love question it. You know, so I, I, I'm just saying they're sitting, I don't understand the 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 divine will spirituality at the moment and i'm questioning it but i'm not saying i'm not, i'm not saying it's 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 i'm not going to hear try and lambast it but i am going to question it i am going to because i i had this feeling the very first talk i had and i said i don't understand this i don't understand this you know, especially where our will interacts. You know, we are created in the likeness and image of God. And, and we, we offer, we give our will to God. But God, but God doesn't do violence in our will and, and, you know, turn us into automated. And there's this, there's when, when some of the commentary on this, I'm just saying, understanding, trying to navigate on you know, this spirituality. And maybe it's because something has been lost in translation. But you're see I've seen the different letters that different bishops and people have put out. And I said, you know, it, it, there is legitimate questioning. So what we need to, in the Irish church, well, especially in, in the church, but in the Irish church in Ireland, what we need, desperately need here is a church that will catechize Catholics again to teach the fundaments of the faith if you go into a religious life or if you know they will have a process of formation for you so if you're going into say the Dominicans and you're going into the novitiate well they're not going to overload you with everything the first year You'll have a rhythm of life. You'll have, say, uh, a prayer routine. You will have, you'll be introduced into the, the rule, how to live the life. And, and then over the course of your life, with spiritual direction, they'll, they'll form you and so that you'll have firm foundations in your spiritual life. Well, Irish laity needs some type of structure like that. We need some type of structure. I don't think I could evangelize Ireland 
with the spirituality of Luisa Picaretta and with a divine will prayer group. I, 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 I'm just saying, I can evangelize with the rosary. I can evangelize with sacred scripture. And Ireland is desperately in need of evangelization. Our own baptized Catholics don't know the faith. And our energy should be, our energies are being pulled in so many ways. Whereas when you look at the synodal report, you have the exam results. There is the exam results in the Irish synodal report of how poorly catechized we are. I'm bored at mass. I'm bored at mass. Liturgy is this. Because you haven't been catechized. You don't know the mystery that's there in front of you. People being drawn into this seer and that seer. And as I said, I don't, I've never been to the house of prayer in Ackle. You know, because across their life, people have said, go to this, he, to this seer and this person and that person. The source, you know, the kingdom of Christ is within us. We have Christ in the Holy Eucharist. In every parish, source or centre of our faith. We have in Holy Mass, what, what depths, mystical profound depths are there and yet we're not able to inflame people's hearts with Christ you know but um and, th and that's kind of what I wanted to tease out there uh, around this spirituality and the main thing I'm going to focus on it's not a devotion so I can't I can't if people ask me what do I think of the flame of love very easy to to Navigate, very easy to navigate what's written here. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, it's a jewel. Very, sits easy to digest. Red, uh, the Flame of Love, I could, I digested it so easily. It sat so well with me. You know, no, really no question. And, and I didn't need a prayer group to explain the flame. I didn't need somebody to explain. It just... I just, it just gelled with me so easily, so, and I, and I don't, I can't explain this. Whereas, maybe it's because the volumes are so, 36 volumes, there's so much written about Louisa Quaker, and I'm there, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to find it. With the, with the Maria Valtorta, as I said, very easy to navigate in the sense that, okay, which genre do I put this into at worst it's a very 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 good novel of, on christ a very vivid imagination on christ a good novel at, at, at worst it's a it's an extremely good novel and at best it is what maria valtorta says it is so you know <laughs> at worst you're you're reading something akin to the best novel that you're ever going to read because it really is incredible really incredible that's the worst case scenario. It's an incredible novel. And the best case scenario, uh, it, it, it is what it says. But again, the church is never going to say this is another gospel. It's never going to prove it in that sense. We know this because, you know, the, it, it where it sits. But it, for me, it, it, it drives it drives you into contemplation. It, it, it has helped me. But that... And, and millions of others it's been downloaded 24 million times the free versions and, and, and I just uh, that's where I sit it with, with Luisa Picaretta and living in the divine will just to ask for more clarifications and maybe it would be good that the whole movement now comes together to kind of take a to study you know because maybe something is lost in translation Maybe there is a problem with quality control. Maybe, okay, well, I saw Father Yannouzi's reply to the Korean bishops. He said, well, this is not what I understand. Okay, well, who is doing, who are, who is, who's overseeing this? You know, with them, the, the, with St. Faustina, she was part of an order and her order of nuns more or less, you know, you go to Krakow and, and, the, there, there is some type of structure around around her diary and stuff like that. But then again, that's it's, she's a very it's a very different type of diary to to Luisa Picaretta. 
and that's my my thoughts on it and again i give them in good spirit and and i ask those that that love louisa Pickeret and the divine will to to, to to take them back and to to structure something so that the people are 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 are, are able to um to understand it more and that there isn't some confusion around it. That that is my thought on it. But again, we have a, we have we are we are duty bound to to evangelize Ireland, to catechize Ireland, to introduce people into this lived encounter with Christ. You know the the, the spirituality that I would be pushing on Ireland. Well, the the the. The method, I would, people know Eduardo Bonin. He is the founder of the Curcio movement. And his, you know, some people are very negative about the Curcio movement. Some people don't want it in their diocese. And maybe some people had a different experience. I can only praise that experience. I think it is the most incredible way to organize people, to, to help them to get involved in the faith. In, in the church to to open up the doors of the mystery of of knowing Christ more you know and once once you start to introduce people into the spiritual life there's this firm foundations of spiritual life you know you can lift them up and then introduce them into the the to the the various things that are that that, that the treasures in the church but we but i i absolutely do think that what Eduardo Bonin d- did is a template we should be using to go out, you know, to con- to revive each parish, you know, to set alight each parish, so that we're not just a couple of people that gather on a Sunday in a church and go home afterwards, but that that we become a real community of faith, you know. And I'm, as I said. <laughs> I've been observing the the Crusio movement for a couple of years and I've nothing but praise for them. Are they perfect? No, no group is. But they are they are they have zeal. They have love. They, I mean and it is incredible to see what is being done in Derry. It really is. I'm I'm just saying it. Um and what could be done if if we put more effort into what they're doing you know and that's that's really i mean it because it really is a template to 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 start to start pe- to to drive a conversation and awareness of our faith if people saw you know we had the men's course the weekend and i didn't blog about what went on in the weekend because i ask people to actually go and experience it with, for yourself so i don't want to ruin the surprise for you but if i had a camera if I'd if I'd have filmed the men's Curcio weekend and I'd done a documentary or film, it would get two or three million views. No doubts about it. You'd be crying. And you'd have men saying, Well, why can't I experience it? I never knew this is we're not advertising what we have in Ireland. We're not advertising it enough. We're not we we we, we really need to do a better job. Because Christ doesn't give us this light. Oh no, I'm here in my cozy thing and I'm my cozy my I'm fine in my my environment. I don't need to go out. What's this thing? You know, it's like sure you look after yourself. People are dying because they don't they haven't seen the light that Christ is shining. They're literally dying. They're dying of despair. And we have this beautiful encounter with Christ. We have to go and give him. Give him. We have to give the light to them. It's like God has given me this, this light. It's not mine. I had nothing to do with this light. He's handed me a lamp. It's not my lamp. He built it. That's his light. Nothing to do with Robert Nugent. That light is needed to be given to others so that they can see and be guided. And that's what we need to do. So if you're asking me, between these two spiritualities, these two paths, one is proven. Nikki Lobstadt, proven. Millions of people, like millions of people, proven. It works. 
you know, and it could be a fundament to start off with. Living in the divine will, kingdom of the divine will, Luisa Picaretta. Um, in process. It's in it's in process. Um, would I would could I could I which one could I use to which of these two can I use to to would I use would I recommend Curcio? You know you you have the likes of Ralph Martin. He he did the Curcio weekend. He talks about in his book. Um. Kiko Arguello, the founder of the neo cash Kumla movement. I'm not a fan of the neo cash Kumla movement. But you cannot fault Kiko Arguello for his passion for the faith. And you cannot fault, the, for example, the priests or seminarians of the neo cash Kumla movement for their passion. I mean, and I know the grandkids that Kiko Arguello catechized. I know the third generation in Madrid, uh, you know, we walked the Camino together. You cannot fault them for their love for the faith. You know, in a world where, you know, we look where we are, we need to get serious here. Uh, you know, I hope I'm making sense, but a, n not a doctor in theology, but I am a doctor in having been burnt by spiritual experiences. Spirit being, 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 I remember being in the room in the seminary in Rome and all of the, Letter. I used to. I said, I don't understand this. These letters, they don't nourish me. I don't get anything out of them in meditation. This is how I felt. Of course, we couldn't say that. But I remember I would read sacred scripture, and I would get a lot from sacred scripture. You know, I I I loved say and the mass. I I loved sacred scripture. I loved the mass. I didn't get anything from Father Marcel, and I remember. I remember sitting beside Father Marcel in um, the headquarters in Rome. So we would sit at a meal, for example. And he would have his special table, which is special tablecloth and uh, his special food and his special nuts and his special so chauffeur driven car and his special uh, apartment. Very which wasn't ours and I was there to think God all of these founders like other founders the founders would live like the community like you'd see St. Teresa of Calcutta she would you know dress and live like her community St. I remember the, the Legions of Christ they brought us on a pilgrimage just to 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 the grotto of the first um, crib uh, and Assisi. I remember looking at the life of Francis Assisi. I said, God, how different his life is to our founder. But we never said anything. I said, God, he was, he, he, uh, he, you know, you look at his clothes and you look at his shoes and you look at his life and how he lived. And it just, I just thought, just the obvious was coming to mind, you know, do what I say, but not what I do. Uh, and they would try to, to, to explain away the obvious to us. Uh, Father Marcel. Well, oh no, it's they, they had all these excuses. Oh, it's 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 just our devotion to him. We want to make him feel uh, content. We want we, it's just our way of of showing our love for him. But if I was Father Marcel, I'd say I don't want to be treated any differently to the community. I'll eat what you're eating. Oh, I had special dietary this and special dry like. I just thought it was interesting, you know, but um, again, it all washed out in in the end. So forgive me if I'm going to question the obvious, you know, and the ob and the thing that I question is when people ask me about Louisa Picaretta and the Divine Rule Movement. It's not a devotion; it's a way of life. It's a it's a way of life, uh, and it's it's an era that's coming. It's, it's you know, and could be the most incredible thing that the church has ever seen. Could be. Could really be the most incredible thing that the church has seen. But it needs to be it 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 it, it we I suppose we'll see we'll see how this moves forward, you know. What I think is the most incredible thing that the church has seen is the Curcio movement in the sense that it's a good template. I can 
it can it can work it can work it, it has transformed lives it has transformed families people do the curseo and they they the the spirit of 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 Christ the, of going out to make a friend to evangelize is all over that you know i mean i think the greatest mystics in the church are those that can make a tea for somebody somebody and welcome them and help them and support them and and you know evangelize i honestly do i i i honestly do and as i said that's that's my it's a template it's 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 a template and it has and it has it really has transformed the church uh, but it's 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 very much focused on christ you know it's 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 christ centered it's 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 pointing people towards him and i i i find it interesting i find it practical anyway so I'm sorry that this went on t- too long but I, I kind of I did want to kind of draw people's attention to you know we need to we need to have foundations we need to work on ourselves uh, and and I'm and I keep pointing people towards going back to the basics you know and what Ireland needs desperately 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 needs is faith formation that needs to be done in person, you know, go and make disciples of all the nations. Discipleship is very, very much something that needs to be done in person. You know, we need to help, encourage, but open to somebody to crack open the word of God to somebody, to teach people sacred scripture, to understand sacred scripture. We need that in the church, desperately need it. And once we've built on all of these things, you know, maybe then, you know, once you've built, you're well catechized, understand sacred scripture, you've you've done all these things. Then afterwards, probably, then you can start reading, you know, mystics, St. John of the Cross. I like St. John of the Cross. I understand him better now than I would have understood him 30 years ago. But I'm no ex- expert on him. I just, I, I, I just am very interested in him. Um, and and maybe in in years to come, maybe Luisa Picaretta and the kingdom of the divine will and the era of the divine will and living in the divine will could be you know one of these great things for the church. Uh, could be, could be. I but yeah, yeah. we'll see where where how how this moves forward. You know, but it's if I was going, if I was betting, if I was saying something, this this is the man that I that we need to be looking at, and this is kind of a template we need to be working on. You know, uh, that three day format that they do on the Curcio movement, and then to have community and groups uh, together afterwards to have group. You know, it's brilliant. It, I mean, come on. I can't understand why the whole church isn't looking at something like this. We don't introduce, none of our kids, none of our Catholic kids in our hundreds and hundreds of, of Catholic schools, none of them, none of them have a three day retreat. None of them. Unless you're the odd private school, maybe some of the. The, the schools that are run by religious groups or the Dominicans, maybe some of you do promote you through 2000. No. Say what you like about the Legions of Christ, but the Catholic schools, we had Catholic retreats and the whole class went on Catholic retreat and you were expected to go on a retreat. You know, we, we don't spend the time to actually catechize our kids. I wasn't catechized. My generation wasn't catechized. My peers weren't catechized. You know, we. I think I had one retreat in secondary school and it was with Sister Breach McKenna. And it, if I'm not mistaken, it was a day retreat. I don't think we stayed over. That was the only retreat. And I vividly remember that retreat. She spoke about her, her healing. That was it. That was it. You know, um, and nothing has changed in Ireland since the 1980s. Because I have three kids that have gone through the Catholic system here 
and I'm, I'm sorry to say it is poorer than it was in the 1980s. At least we had religious in our schools in the 1980s. Now we don't have even have religious. It is worse, our Catholic school system, than the 1980s. You know, and what we need is catechesis. People to step forward and actually to teach the faith. But people that actually love the faith, that'll teach it. You know, and that's why I think the form, the format, this cursio format is something that should be used for teenagers, for young adults, university. I mean, every school system should should be offering this format, the template that they have. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good system. It's, 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 it's proven, it's proven itself. You know, the secret... Um, the, it's a methodology you know it's not like Eduardo Bonin says has come to give us you're going to live it's not a way of he's, he's giving Christianity as the way of life you know this is the way of life you know? and I thought it was fascinating you know I, I thought I thought it was fascinating but then you know I'm just reflecting here anyway God bless you take care bye bye